ladies and gentlemen, I want to say that I am very disappointed in WWE. And I put out a video about Dusty Rhodes saying that when Dusty left us, he left the WWE in a bad situation because from the moment on, the product is going to get so bad, it's going to be ridiculous eventually. And when you look at this show right after the Money in the Bank, the next show that leads into the next pay-per-view, they have to make a great impression. This was not a great impression show. In fact, the ending was okay. It was good. But the entire show itself, after, before the ending, I'm getting things confused. You can see I'm upset. Before the ending was absolute trash. This show was dumb. And I may use this as my title. This was a dumb show. What else can you say? I mean, when you look at the matches here and the storylines behind them, if they have any, it's so bad. It's not even funny. Let's go with Bad News Barrett and R-Truth. What do you actually have there? Bad News Barrett legitimately won Money in the Bank. What is R-Truth doing? He's making a parody of himself saying that I want to be the king. Burger King. And it's not even funny. Because if you're saying that you want to be the king, what they could have done with our truth they could have done something different with him. And he says, you know what? I'm going back to being fucking crazy. Like I was in 2011 against John Morrison. Got so mad that he embarrassed me. I went and grabbed some water food in my face and smoked a pack of smokes in England. And made everybody angry at me. And for almost a whole year, our truth was completely entertaining. Doing the little Jimmy thing. Acting nuts. Until he went away from him and started acting like his old self. This is his old self. It's terrible. If he started acting completely out of control. Insane. He has a better chance of being more interesting than he is now. And seeing this match, which wasn't even a match. I got bored of it. I want to see something better from Bad News Bear and definitely something better from our truth and I'm not getting it. <coughs> then you look at the foursome. You look at Kane, Orton, Sheamus, and Dean Ambrose. What do you actually have there? Dean Ambrose now has nothing to do because of the ending of the show. He should have won that title. He should have. It would have been better for him to win the title then Seth Rollins. But if you're going to go there, you're going to go there. But what do you give Dean Ambrose now? Nothing. The only person you can deal with now with that is Sheamus. But then Sheamus isn't dealing with it because he's dealing with Orton. And then you throw Kane into it. So you look at both matches. This was all about Orton and this was all about Sheamus. Kane and Dean Ambrose were an afterthought. An afterthought. Even with the sin-in from Dean Ambrose, it was a freaking afterthought. And I feel sorry for Dean because he has nothing to do now. And then that makes you wonder what's going to happen to Roman Reigns. Roman Reigns, the person that should have won Money in the Bank, then Sheamus. And mind you, I'm not against Sheamus. I really believe when he came back with a new hairstyle and a, a bit of a better attitude, he could have easily won Money in the Bank. But that was before he dealt with Dolph Ziggler. And then he dealt with Neville. And then he dealt with Bad News Barrett. And then dealt with Dolph Ziggler again. And that kiss my arse thing. They went too far with it. So it made him look bad. Now, mind you, I'm hoping that he can still get something out of it. Because he really doesn't look that good. But when you look at this, what, he, he didn't really get anything out of the entire match between him and Dean Ambrose. And him helping Kane to beat up Orton. Because now they're going to be stuck in a feud and we've seen them so long and so many times, I don't want to see it. Now, let's move on to a couple of things that I did enjoy, sort of. Byron Saxton, he, I was very happy to see because Byron is the next generation of commentators that need to be brought up periodically to see if they can hang on the main show. I know he's been doing um, interviews. I know he's been working on main event. I know that he does the panel during the um, pay-per-views. 
but you need to actually let him and the others who are involved in that to actually do this because you're not going to keep JBL there forever. You're not going to keep King, Booger T, or Michael Cole there forever. You're not going to put Vince and Kenny McMahon back on commentating and you're definitely not going to put Triple H there either. So you need these guys to be brought up periodically and I'm hoping they'll do this more often. I really hope they do because they do need it. Now, that was one of the two. I'll explain what the last one is that I actually liked, but everything else is shit. Bellas versus Paige. <sighs> I am going to do a video on Nikki Bella that is stated. Should Nikki Bella leave the WWE or not? Or I may just say, should Nikki Bella leave? The main reason I'm saying this is because Nikki Bella is not doing anything. I could say both Bellas and I had considered it, but when you look at this, Brie has to stay because of Daniel Bryan. He needs money. Being injured and going to the doctors costs tens of thousands of dollars. They can't get you not regular health care like the people, kind of like me, who's injured. He has to get health care that he's got to pay out of pocket. And he's going to be paying a lot of money. And if they don't have the reserves, she's got to make the money. So when you see Nikki, you wonder what is she gaining from this. Maybe she's getting money, but she's not getting any respect. Because to be honest, I don't see nothing good for Nikki Bella at all in this. When you see the match, you don't care. When you saw the promo segment, and mind you, I love me. My Layla, I hadn't seen her in months on the main show. Layla is still as gorgeous as ever. Alicia Fox, I don't mind. She's still a good looking woman. Mind you, for... A Rosa Mendez, she looks way better as a brunette than a blonde. She looked totally weird as a blonde. She didn't look right. She looks way more better and actually sexier. She's not as sexy as a Naomi or a Layla, but she's sexier. To me personally, I thought she was very beautiful, but she never had that sexy allure like a Eve Torres. She never did. Like a Mickey Jane, she has a sexy streak in her, but I never felt that from Rosa Mendez until she went dyeing her hair back to its original color and she acted like herself and now she looks way better and she's sexier now and my Naomi and Tamina was there but when you look at this why? because Total Divas is coming back on that's the only reason they're showing them if you're gonna do that give them a fucking storyline cause we didn't have nothing here next I wanna get through these things Badly. New Day versus the Primetime Players and Neville. Now, I'm mixed with this. You see, I like the Primetime Players. I like Neville. And even though New Day has still a bad gimmick, I still like them. Even though I wish they would turn really dark. I mean, really evil heels. But you got what you got. They're trying their best to make the New Day sucks work. But here's the problem. It wasn't a match is you don't see enough of them. The tag team champions don't get promo segments in the ring anymore. And New Day, they had the moments. They even had a chance to open the show at one time. But I want to see the primetime players do what they do best. And they make fun of everybody. And Titus O'Neil is one of the most funniest guys you can meet. But we didn't get this. So... If they're doing it on SmackDown, on a main event, and on NXT, well not NXT, on Superstars, it does not work. You need to do it on the main show so people can see how funny they are and so you can get interested in them. And when you came to the match, it was a standard match. Primetime players and Neville won. You got to see the Red Arrow. But I felt like there was just an element missing. There's no fun there from the primetime players making fun of people. And there's my problem. And that kind of hurt Neville as well. Because I really felt that he could benefit from the primetime players really making fun of people. That's just me. Now, let's see, am I forgetting anything? Um, just in case I forgot about The Miz show and... Ooh, the Miz, The Show, and The Ryback. A trifecta of stupidness. The Miz isn't a great character right now, but if it's Miz versus 
a Ryback, it could work to a, to a certain extent. Show's not that entertaining either, but working with Ryback, it would be something that could probably work. You put them all together, it's not working. Just in case I didn't say this, it didn't work. Seeing this match was dumb. The count-out win was dumb. I didn't see anything good for The Miz. I want to see either The Miz versus Ryback or Show versus Ryback. Putting them all together is not helping. And this is, this is ridiculous. <sighs> Let me see what's left to, to be here. Because the last two things, one was great, the other one was beyond dumb, and it frustrate, <coughs> frustrates me. When it came to Kevin Owen, Owens, you see I'm botching his name because I'm angry. When I botch, I'm angry. Kevin Owens should have won on Sunday. We all know that. John Cena did not win, need that win. No matter how much John Cena fans want to say that John is the best, he's not if he doesn't have someone that's credible. Kevin Owens was credible. If he had beaten John, it would not bring him down any more than, than he is now. He would stay the same. In fact, he would have gone up because then it would show proof that John isn't indestructible. But we didn't get that. He won that match and then Kevin Owens hurting him afterward didn't help Kevin. But here's the thing I felt was the most stupidest thing out of the entire situation of the entire show. And everything here was not good at all. Him having to state what he stated wasn't bad at all. Saying that he felt that John shaking his hand was taking a spotlight that didn't need to be done. He was right. John could have gone to the back and walked away. He didn't. He stayed to make himself look good with Kevin. So that part of his promo was great. But then when you had to deal with Dolph Ziggler, I felt that was a mistake. Because even though it was a great match, you did not need to have Kevin Owens go to the limit with Dolph. That was wrong. For the simple reason, you want to show that Kevin Owens can stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with John Cena easily. And be a real credible threat. Seeing him go after Dolph, dealing with Dolph I mean, and then having to struggle with Dolph was the wrong move. Dolph should have not been able to hang with him. And I like Dolph. But in the condition Dolph is in with Lana, he does not need to be looking that good with a Kevin Owens. Kevin had to beat him easier. And we didn't get that. And then I felt the WWE overcompensated because I believe they noticed that they made a mistake. What do we get? We get Machine Gun Kelly. I'm not really into rap music or hip hop. I'm just not. I'm more of a house type of person or trans. But the point is, people say Machine Gun Kelly's an up and coming rapper. Fine, they put him on the show. But then you have a Kevin Owens kick the shit out of him and pop up power bomb him in some cardboard boxes off the, off, off the stage. Are you serious? You're going to do this to Kevin Owens to try and make him look tougher. If you wanted Kevin Owens to look tougher, you should have never let him lose to John Cena 1. You should have never had the struggle against Adolf Zingler 2. And you definitely didn't need to have him pop up powerbomb a Machine Gun Kelly off the stage. It was not necessary. It did not help Kevin Owens. And if anyone says it did, explain in detail why. Because I don't see it. Kevin Owens needed one thing. He just needed to win on Sunday. And that would have helped him. That would have helped John Cena. And that would have helped the product. And I don't see shit. Finally, the only other thing that was good on the show. The ending. I don't care about the opening. He was acting brash. And he had to fight with Dean Ambrose. And that was it. But the ending was necessary. I knew when the Triple H... The King of Kings. I am the King of Kings. Do not play with me. Or I'll make sure I pedigree your ass off the stage. That kind of King of Kings. Saying that he needs to show how much pressure to the crowd to win a Seth Rollins over. If you understand what I'm saying. Basically he just wanted to really make Seth Rollins pay for saying he didn't need him. 
seeing a, well, this is what I thought at first. When he was talking, saying, I need to put you on, well, not exactly, he says, you need to be put under pressure to see if you're the lump of coal that will either crack, crack into dust or turn into the diamond that you could be, that you are, Seth Rollins. I thought two things. One, Sting. Two, Brock Lesnar. And the reason I thought Sting is because we haven't seen him. But I felt Brock had to come back. His music hit. And I knew it had to be him and Brock. But I felt one mistake was made. It was an understandable mistake to keep him as he is. But I felt it was still a, a nasty mistake. Instead of Seth Rollins standing nose to nose with Brock. And even if Brock had to power bomb him. Or F5 him or whatever. He should have stood nose to nose with him. Because in the end, Seth Rollins, if he's going to stand on his own, he really needed to be able to stand there. But he's going, not looking at his ass, scared out of his mind and backing away like a bitch. Really made it terrible. But seeing Brock Lesnar come out as a challenger is the wisest thing to do. So how I feel about this show, it was a terrible terrible show and the ending did not save it. I said this on my debate of the week with Dusty Rhodes and my pay-per-view of Money in the Bank. Without Dusty there and whatever little influence he does, the product is going to suffer and it's going to get worse from here. Like I said, sometimes we'll get a couple of good, good shows or something good, maybe very rarely we'll get something great. But we're going to get even worse content than we ever had before. And the only person I can blame is Vince himself. But this is how I feel about it. What do you guys believe? So I hope you enjoyed the Zane view. Please give me a comment below. Watch out for my Bella oh, debate of the week. I have to do it. Should Nikki Bella stay in the WWE? Have a good day and have a good night. Peace out!